There are certain criteria for well placement you should consider before you begin drilling your well. First, consider whether the well is even accessible. Next, look for other wells in the area. This is an indication that there is available water. Vegetation, especially large trees, is another indication of water in the area. You should also take into consideration whether there is a septic system or latrine pit nearby. You should be at least 100 feet away from these sources of possible contamination. The locals are a valuable source of information for such questions. It's important to take a good inventory and to properly inspect your equipment before drilling. For more on this, see our accompanying video. You will begin by digging two 3x3x2 three by three by foot pits separated by an 8 inch gap. The pit closest to the drilling rig is your first settling pit. This is where your cuttings will settle out. Water will then flow into the pit on the right. Water from this pit will be recycled through the mud pump and then back into the borehole. Next, you will want to slide the two stabilizer tubes into the table assembly with the pipe slip. Ensure that your table assembly is on level ground. It may be necessary to use shims to level the assembly. Raise the mast with a thicker plate on the bottom, and then bolt the handle to the top of the mast. Raise the mast to match the holes on the bottom of the mast with the holes on the table, being careful not to smash your fingers. Then, bolt the mast to your table. Tie three ropes to the rig using bowline knots. Make a tripod with the ropes. Hammer stakes into the ground and attach the rope to the stakes with taut line hitch knots.
adjust your ropes until your rig is level on two planes. Dig a one foot deep cone shaped hole where you will be drilling. You will dig a one foot deep channel connecting the two pits. This channel allows your water to flow from the first settling pit on the left into the mud pit on the right. Dig a trench connecting your borehole to the first settling pit. This will allow your mud to be recycled into the first settling pit. It will also be a place to collect your cuttings. Get depression into the soil in the second settling pit where you will place a bucket. The bucket keeps you from sucking too much of the bottom material out of the pit. Ensure your gaskets are properly in place in all hosing. Attach tubes to the mud pump using a spanner wrench. It is important to test the viscosity of your mud before you begin drilling. The Marsh Funnel Test for Viscosity is the standard test for viscosity, which relates to thickness. In the following test, bentonite has been put into the water. Bentonite increases the viscosity so we can lift out heavier cuttings. To perform this test, fill a marsh funnel with one liter of water Pouring the water through the screen to remove grass and other particles that could clog the hole of the funnel. Time how long it takes to fill the cup when placed below the funnel to the 1 liter line. Time is the viscosity measurement. The standard for water at 70 degrees is about 26. Viscosity decreases as temperature increases because particles are vibrating faster. Before drilling, it's important to test your pumps for proper circulation. Before drilling, grease all critical points on the rig. This will ensure a watertight seal and protect any moving parts. Put a thin coat of oil up the entire length of the mat. When you're ready to begin drilling, start the engine and throttle it back to a slow idle to inspect your moving parts. Insert your pipe slip into your table assembly. This ensures straight drilling. It may be necessary to tighten and grease all seals to stop any water from leaking from the pipe stem.
Once water is flowing properly, the lead driller should slowly lower the pump by moving the handle counterclockwise. A helper should strain grass and other particles from the second settling bit so they don't clog your suction hose. The assistant driller assists the lead driller and clears cuttings away from the borehole. Before adding more piping, rotate the drill all the way up and then all the way down to clear out the borehole. Once the lead driller reaches the bottom of the mast, you should divert flow away from the pipe stem. Ensure the drill stem is properly seated in the pipe slit and use the hex wrench to unscrew the pipe. Once the pipe is unscrewed, raise the motor to its highest point. Apply grease to the ends of all the pipes. Loosely attach the bottom of your next pipe stem. Increase the throttle until your motor begins to slowly spin. Slowly lower your motor as you line up your new drill stem. Revert the water flow back into your drill stem and then continue drilling. Cutting samples from the trench connecting the borehole to the first settling pit. Record when there is a change in the cuttings and at every five feet. Record both the consistency of the cuttings and the depth at which they were found. Prepare the section of perforated casing that's to be put in the water bearing zone of the well. First, section off the pipe into thirds by drawing one inch thick lines. These lines will ultimately be support for your PVC. Next, using a hacksaw or circular saw, make cuts between your support lines and the PVC on all three sides. Continue this up the entire length of one of your PVC casings. If the section is to be the bottom piece of the casing, add a cap to the end. After drilling and reaming the hole, you must begin clearing the hole and surrounding areas to insert your casing. Begin by rotating the rotary power assembly out of the way and removing the hoses using the spanner wrench. You should also begin draining your settling and mud pits by pumping the water away from your well. Using a team of three to four people, begin removing the drill stems. 
Two people should use sea wrenches to grip the pipe. The top person gets a firm grip on the pipe, allowing the bottom person to lower his sea wrench on the pipe, being careful not to hit the slip. Once the bottom person has a good grip, the top person lowers his wrench to meet the bottom one. Once the two meet, they should lift the section of pipe. Remove the section of pipe by resting it between the two sea wrenches and the slip. Then, using a pipe wrench, unscrew the top section of the pipe. Once the pipe is loosened, the fourth member of the team should unscrew the pipe and place it aside for cleaning. The second group should begin cleaning the drill stems and tools. Once the final drill stem has been removed, use two pipe wrenches to unscrew the drill bit and set aside for later cleaning. Once your borehole is clear, begin inserting your casing two 10 foot sections at a time, making sure the capped end goes on first and your perforated section will be at the water bearing zone of your well. Using two pipe wrenches and a four inch casing slip, hold the casing in place, being careful not to lose it down the borehole. Next, connect one to two more 10 foot sections of casing using PVC cement or screws. gravel into the annular space surrounding the perforated well screen and pour cement into the top several feet to provide a sanitary seal. Begin by screwing the pump rod together. Imagine that you've connected 30, 40, even 50 more feet above the pump and connected your pumping mechanism. A lever on the mechanism allows you to pump water as seen here. Your pumping rod comes through the housing. The last pipe connects to the white water outlet. This is bolted into place on top of the housing. The pump rod that comes through the water reservoir connects directly to the top plate. A chain and a fitting that is threaded on the pump lever allows the pump rod to be screwed directly to the lever. Your pump installation is now complete.